uh, after doing uh, the discussion of fistula in ano, which is a complicated type of you know uh, disorder, there, let's move on to the one of the congenital problem which can happen in the anal canal or the anus that is known as imperforate anus. So, what do you mean by that? What is what is the meaning of imperforate anus? Yes. What is the meaning? Very simple. Imperforate means anal opening is not there. Okay. Anal opening is absent. So when anus is not open to the exterior, the baby cannot pass meconium or cannot pass stool. So this is a very complicated situation and it is present right there at the time of birth. So let's talk about it. Imperforate anus is a congenital causes of intestinal obstruction, and it is a cause of large intestinal obstruction here. The anus of the newborn baby must be always checked for the presence of patency in the neonatal examination. This is a standard part of the neonatal examination after the baby is born. We should check for the patency, and we mainly check for you know different type of patency, right? Like urethral opening, anal opening. Okay, we check for the nasal opening, isn't it? Oral and all those things, whatever are necessary to examine. Because if these openings are not patent, there will be a severe problem. How the baby will pass a stool if the anal opening is not there? Imperforate anus affects one in 4,000 new babies. So it is not that very uncommon. In male or in male baby, the most frequent abnormality is imperforate anus with a recto urethral fistula. Now, this is a complicated, complicated thing. Fistula is always a complicated thing there. And this fistula is between the rectum and the urethra, followed by perineal and recto vesical form as well. Okay. In female, the recto vestibular fistula is most common, followed by perineal with persistent cloaca or cloaca, whatever you want to say. Cloaca is a embryological structure from where, okay, those urinary bladder and the rectum are formed. So there is a persistent perineal fistula at that site. So in female, rectovestibular fistula is associated with imperforate anus, whereas in male, rectourethral fistula may be there. Vestibule, okay, is the, is the area around the vulva. Now, there is a higher than average incidence of other congenital malformation in case of, uh, you know, imperforate anus. And this is a very important question from your exam point of view. Now, see here. These are esophageal atresia in vector or vector association. So esophageal atresia is quite common along with imperforate anus. And how to diagnose esophageal atresia? Yes, how to diagnose it? Anybody? How to diagnose esophageal atresia? Sir, by passing uh, rubber into the esophagus, it will coil there, sir. It is a blind tube. Very nice. Okay, that is the wonderful answer he has given. And that is the way that is so quick and so precise. He just passed a tough type of rubber, you know, red rubber catheter there. And uh, it will not go distally because that area is not developed at all. This is an atretic part. So the, the, the catheter will coiled up and coming back. This is esophageal atresia diagnosis. Now, what do you mean by this vector or vector association? Now see this, V stands for vertebral abnormality or vertebral anomaly. So we need to check the vertebra for that. Who knows, there may be spina bifida there. A stands for anal atresia. That's what we are talking right now, anal atresia or imperforate anus. C stands for cardiac anomaly or heart defect. Maybe congenital heart disease are there like VSD. T and E stands for tracheoesophageal fistula, 
और ट्रैक यू इशू फेजल एबनॉर्मेलिटी ओके और दिस यू कैन ऑल्सो से वन पार्ट ऑफ दिस इज इशो फेजल एट्रेशिया ओके दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द सेम प्रोसेस आर स्टैंड फॉर रीनल प्रॉब्लम और रेडियल प्रॉब्लम रेडियल इज द रेडियस बोन which is a uh, you know maybe absent okay and l stands for limb abnormality so v a c t e r l vector association okay or vector association okay so vector the c is not there isn't it p a t stands for craqueoesophageal abnormality okay and r stands for renal or radial vector or vectoral can we ask as a question in the exam the risk of a couple with one affected child having a second child with imperforated anus is about 1% so the chances are not that high now what are the clinical feature the most important feature here is intestinal obstruction and uh, the baby will fail to pass the meconium now tell me how long can we wait for the meconium to pass without any worry 24 hours 24 hours exactly 24 hours excellent 20 up to 24 hour meconium has to be passed if the meconium is not passed up to the 24 hour we need to examine why the baby has not passed then during that time if there is no opening it would be diagnosed easily don't don't say oh the baby will pass after after a few hours don't worry this is not the way we say we need to examine the baby right now in some cases imperforate anus is found when a thermometer cannot be passed or as a routine baby checkup some good pediatrician or some good doctors they are checking the baby routinely at delivery room okay they don't even wait for 24 hour so during that time okay they can uh, find it out if the imperfect anus is there now how we confirm it whether it is high or low type of imperfect anus remember uh, imperfect anus is also known as anal atresia and anal canal is about 4 cm long so uh, uh, listen it properly first so how i know whether that you know 4 cm proximal to the you know desired anal opening at that area there is atresia or the atresia is right there just under the skin so these are the two possibilities there and to confirm it we will do invertogram this is known as invertogram this is very interesting type of procedure see here 6 hours after the birth okay sufficient air may have collected in the large intestine to cast an x-ray shadow with a metal button or a coin which is strapped to the site of the anus the infant is held upside down for 3 to 4 minute and then x-ray is taken so this is known as invertogram now let me explain it again we need to wait for around 6 hour we cannot immediately do invertogram even if i diagnose it quite early at the time of birth you know i cannot do invertogram right there because the baby needs to swallow that air okay the air should be collected in the large intestine then only it will cast x ray shadow now what i do i will put a small metal button or a coin okay a strap to that point where the anal opening would exist that area so that i can see that shadow on the x ray and then i will make the infant upside down okay upside down so that whatever gas or air is there in the large intestine it will move up it will move up okay so that the distance between the coin which is kept there and the the shadow can be easily seen if this uh, distance is you know longer then this is known as high type of you know anal atresia if uh, it is very short or right there you know then the 
a treatment is also very easy and it is not a complicated situation. See this? The gas in the rectum will rise to the top and indicate the distance between the site of the metal indicator and the blind end of the rectum. So this shows you know, how high is the anal atresia or the imperforate anus. If the distance is over 2.5 centimeter, the abnormality is called high one, high one, and it is a complicated one. It may be necessary to wait until the baby is 24 hour old before the rectal gas appear. Sometimes, you know, even after waiting for six hours, uh, the X-ray doesn't show any gases in the colon or the rectum. So we can repeat it again uh, when the baby is 24 hours, just to confirm the diagnosis. Urine culture is necessary. Now, just now, what we say, uh, you know, some of the high type of uh, uh, anal atresia are associated with fistula formation, fistula. So who knows, there may be fistula tract or fistula tract between the rectum or the anal canal and the urinary tract. So urine culture will show some of the bacteria if that is present. The presence of proteus or pyocinus usually signify that a high fistula between rectum and bladder is present. Now, this proteus or pyocinus means pseudomonas, okay, pseudomonas because it produces uh, some particular pigment, uh, pyocinin, that's why the name is given, is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So these are the uh, you know, bacteria, these are uh, bacteria present there, so they may even E. coli, even E. coli is important here. Now look at this X-ray, okay, and try to understand, yeah. Now, this is known as invertogram, and invertogram is done for the diagnosis of anal atresia, another term for anal the imperforate anus. You see this? This is the coin which is kept here, okay? And the baby is kept upside down. Now the air will, you know, go up, isn't it? Now this is the upper part because the baby is hanged upside down. So, or held upside down, sorry, hang is not a good term, held upside down and, uh, uh, this ear, see this, it is going up. This is the upper part of the body now for the time being. So gas will always go this side. So if the gas shadow is right here, very near to this coin, we are not very worried. This is very easy to treat. But if it is more than 2.5 centimeter, if this distance at the gap, you know, then it is a high type of anal atresia and probably may be associated with some fistulation as well. Now, this is a complicated one. Now, what is the treatment? See here. Regarding the low abnormality, the track should be opened with scissor, followed by routine dilatation of the anus. It is as easy as that. Stenosed anus, okay? In case of stenosed anus, anus is there, the opening is there, but it's very, very small or narrow. Now, you can uh, make it wider, okay? You can go for regular dilatation there. This is not a big type of problem. Whereas, you know, high abnormality is a challenging one. Now, look here, what are the challenges? The high abnormality present a very difficult problem and each case must be considered on its merit. I cannot compare one case with the other because who knows one of the case, which is the high anal atresia is not associated with fistula, but other case may be associated with fistula. So every case should be taken individually on its merit. So the possibilities of the treatment are laparotomy, division of rectourethral fistula and transverse colostomy. A rectal pull through operation can be done later. See that these are different stages of the surgery. In the first stage, laparotomy means opening of the peritoneal cavity or opening of abdominal cavity. If, if any fistula is there, you divide it and transverse colostomy is done. Then second stage surgery is done later on. Another is laparotomy, 
division of fistula and pull through operation in one stage. So some of the surgeons are even doing that. For the pull through operation, the lower bowel is mobilized and a new passage is created through the pelvic floor to the site of the future anus. Now, this is dilated by Hager's dilator so that the bowel can be pulled down and its mucosa is stitched to the skin of the newly formed anus. Now, let me make it very easier for you. What they do, they will make an uh, opening there, okay, on exact area where the anal opening would be there in a normal people, a normal kid, a normal child, okay. They'll cut that area. They will make an opening there. Now, what they do, they will mobilize the bowel and they pull that rectum below. When they reach to that area, which is just cut open, they'll stitch the mucosa there. So the, the whole uh, GI tract has, has, you know, maintained, isn't it, patency now. It is no more obstructed. This is the important surgery done for high abnormality.